Let's talk a little bit about the admission requirements. And and I and, and here I want to I want to answer some questions that sometimes appear when I'm talking about our program, especially in India. We do accept this 15 year education uh, as long as the institution where the students graduating for uh, from is is NAC accredited and also the student graduate in first class. If your degree was four years, then it doesn't have to be NAC accredited. But if your de degree was three years, it has to be NAAC accredited and you will have to graduate in first class if that's the case. Normally, let's start with the English proficiency. Um, we have we have a few more of those English proficiencies than the ones that I'm showing on the screen, but the most popular ones are gonna be IELTS 6.0, TOEFL 71, PTE 51, Duolingo 100, and there is the Cambridge certification that you can have a B2 um, uh, um, uh, level so that we can waive the English proficiency for you. Some master's programs um, uh, require a higher English proficiency, but I think it's only one or two, and they are not the STEM ones. Uh, I think the TESOL is going to ask you for a 89 TOEFL and a 6.5 IELTS, but it's only that one. Now, some programs have different requirements for admissions. If you're looking for an undergraduate program, bachelor's degree, your minimum GPA will be um, a 2.0 in the scale of four. Now, for the majority of the programs, for the graduate programs, for master's degree, you'll be looking at about 3.0 and higher. There is only one program that uh, that requires 2.75, which is the MBA, but the majority of those are uh, 3.0 and higher. Now, through the English proficiency, we can also do conditional admission. Let's say that you are, that we ask you for 6.0 in the IELTS, but you get 5.5. So you can do conditional admission. We will issue a, a, an immigration document that says that you will um, enter to your academic program, whether it is a master's degree or, or bachelor's degree, but you will take one, some time to also do ESL. And that could be a way if you're open to, to that opportunity um, to come to Murray State. Um, now, there is another question that uh, comes uh, comes up a lot. Is the GRE required? The, I wish I could have one answer for that, but it's just each program, uh, each master's program um, has different requirements and, and they decide if they require the GRE or not. So the, the answer to that question would be depends on the program. So as I said, the most popular ones, MSIS, uh, they require GRE. Um, uh, they require a 288 on, on the GRE. Um, chemistry doesn't require GRE. Mathematics doesn't require the GRE. The MBA does not require the GRE. Uh, the cybersecurity program requires the GRE. It's at, you need a minimum of 300. So uh, I'll just leave it there regarding the admission requirements. Uh, and uh, uh, but, I'm, but I can answer some questions if we have a Q&A uh, 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 section. So here are, you know, another important question that students have um, when it comes to uh, going to study in the United States. What's the cost of it? Um, so here I have two columns. We have a column for bachelor's degree. The total cost, and this is without the scholarships, the total cost is $28,000 for a full cost of attendance. But um, uh, the tuition fee are going to be on uh, $14,000, 14700 um, This housing and meals will add up to $1,100 per year. All these numbers are per year. And then uh, book and insurance would be about two thousand dollars for bachelor's degree. Now, for a master's degree, as I was, as we were just looking into the video with uh, our student here, it's about seven thousand dollars. I think here it says six thousand nine hundred dollars. Um, housing and meals are seven thousand, and then uh, books and insurance are about two thousand two hundred. So, um, there are some talks that we need to do here regarding these numbers because these are just for visa purposes. So this is a bank, this is what the bank statement have to say, but you don't necessarily will spend that money. First of all, because after you get admitted, you can apply to many of the scholarships we have, especially for graduate students. We do have something called graduate assistantships where you can get your full tuition waived if you get one of those. That's how I did my master's degree. That's how I did my PhD. And, 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 and it's an opportunity that is there for international students. So I will encourage you to, to ask for this to Richard, to me, so that we can provide some links and some information that you can start applying to those. Hey, free tuition, I'll get I'll get that, you know, any day. 
Um, but we do also have many other scholarships. I, I'm just mentioning here a few of them. We have transfer scholarship, partnership scholarships, international leadership scholarships. We also have jobs on campus that you can do. Many students get those. I'm sure you're informed of that, but uh, you can work a maximum of 20 hours a week. And uh, the students make about $200 a week. So that's about $800 a month. And 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 th that's good money for you to pay for your you know groceries and and rent. Uh, so it, it's not money that is gonna help you pay for everything. But hey, it's a really good help for international students that are here. And the other thing I have to tell you, and I'm a former international student. I used to work heavily on campus. That they like to hire us because um, normally we don't go home multiple times a week. I mean, I mean a year. Imagine you going to India two or three times a year. That's a lot of money. Or I'm from South America, so uh, no, so that's the reason why a lot of the offices on campus, they'd like to hire us because we are on campus all the time. Now, another thing that I have to tell you is for graduate students, especially, and for everybody, if you are over 21, you don't have to live on campus. If you are under 21 years old, you have to live on campus the first year, year and a half. But then if you're over 21 for graduate students, we have houses here around campus that you can rent with your friends and that will that will mitigate, that, that will alleviate some of the financial burden that it is living on Murray. But, you know, compared, to, that's why the Midwest have become very popular for international students because the cost of living is actually very affordable compared to other areas in the country. Let's talk about Florida, let's talk about New York, let's talk about California. <clears throat> and I always tell the students that are going through the same experience that I went through is that, Use these locations to 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 as a trampoline. As soon as you graduate, then you can jump to any to any state that you that you're inclined to go to because because the cost of living here is also accessible uh, to many of us. You know where our when our currency is not as heavy as the dollar, so you can take advantage of that particular situation and say, hey, I'm gonna go to Murray, I'm gonna graduate, and then I can get a job anywhere in the country with the OPT opportunity that you're going to have. So keep that in mind. It's about thinking strategically. It's about thinking smart in that sense. Uh, I mean, it, it'll be great to live in New York. It'll be great to live in Florida, but it'll be great to live in Kentucky as well. There's a lot of beautiful things that are happening here that we are not as popular as Hollywood have, you know, uh, put in, into the movies. But uh, but uh, because other areas are popular because of the social media, because of but uh, it comes with a price. So keep that in mind. Uh, I, I'm giving you this advice as a as a former international student. That's that's what I can all uh, share with you from my perspective. Uh, and I did all my schooling in, in, in an area like this when I did my bachelor's degree in the United States, my master's and my Ph.D. as well. And those are the things that you uh, need to take advantage of. Um, here are some of the, uh, I, I was mentioning, I'm not going to elaborate much on here on the English language program, but know that there is an opportunity if you if your if your English proficiency is not up to the level or if not up to 6.0 in IELTS or 71 in TOEFL, um, this could be a possibility for you to come. And you will do two applications, one for the ESL and one for the academic program. And the, the I-20 would say, all right, he's going to be, the student is going to be in ISL for half a semester, or a semester, and then he's going to join the academic program as well. So keep in mind that that could be an opportunity. Um, here are some of the services we provide on campus, as any other universities. I'm sure, you know, the beauty of the students in India is you guys are very well informed, especially if you're working with, with an agency or with a company like uh, uh, with Richard and his team. Um, you are extremely well informed. So um, many of the things we have on campus are are, you know, the international student office, that's going to be your best friend when you are on campus. Um, that's going to be the people who are going to help you find the jobs or or maintain your immigration status. We have the career services office. They are the ones who, who are going to help you put together your resume, do mock interviews, uh, attend to job fairs. We have job fairs on campus. Actually, yesterday was the job fair for this semester. We have twice a year. So job fairs, companies come to campus it's a massive event. It's in a huge auditorium. Um, and then students get to apply to those companies. And, and a lot of them get interviews right on the spot. So we have students who are hired a year in advance uh, for some for some jobs. And those are those are a good number of students who are hired a year in advance before you even graduate. So keep that in mind. We have health services. There is a clinic on campus. 
God forbid if something happened to you, we still have a we, we have a, a team on campus that could help you at the beginning. Otherwise, if it's something bigger, well, we have a hospital on in, in the city. We have the wellness center, uh, which is um, uh, where you go to the gym, go to do some sports. It's a massive facility as well. We are a division one university when it comes to sports. So um, there is a good number of scholarships. If you are very good in a discipline, in a, in a sport discipline, um, talk to talk to us. We'll be able to connect you with, with those teams. But Division One means is the top of the top in the United States. And that's what we are here. Um, to give you an example, the NBA come to recruit in our uh, for in our basketball team. So this is a high performance team here uh, in many of the sports that we have uh, on campus. We have dining venues as well. Uh, so anything you need, the dining venues are basically restaurants and places to eat on campus. But you also have the opportunity to cook in your dorms. There are communal kitchens. Uh, they 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 help, they allow you to use the utensils. So um, that is an important thing to know. And uh, the university is basically a city within a city. Everything that you need is here. And in all these places that I just mentioned before is where the majority of the students find jobs in offices, at the gym, in restaurants, um, um, especially if you are looking for any type of job, um, you know, there is the opportunity to apply to any of these places. Uh, the graduate assistantships also give you the full tuition if that's for grad students, but they also get you to work 20 hours a week as well. And that is an extra money that you make also with the graduate assistantships. So I know I spoke, I've been speaking too much, but uh, finally, I just want to leave you guys with the deadlines. Um, the fall 24 is the one that you can see on the right uh, screen. Uh, graduate students uh, have a deadline of, of uh, June 28th and bachelor's degree have a deadline of about uh, July 19th. Um, it's, it's for the ink, for the ESL, you can apply anytime. Um, so the advice I will give in this section is apply as soon as possible because um, uh, it's not only the application, we take about one week for undergrads and we take about three to four weeks for graduate students, but also you want to have enough time, uh, to get a visa appointment. I know that some things have changed in India. I know you, you will have, I think the opportunity to apply only once in the next 12 months. Uh, some of these policies have changed in India. So uh, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, the deadline, especially uh, I, I will tell the students, uh, start the application now. I mean, you can just go to the link, start filling up your, your, your information and get familiar with the application. A lot of times it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's better to get to know so you can navigate it uh, um, easier. And with that being said, I mean, spring 25 is coming also. Uh, spring 25 is the semester starts in January. Uh, the the October 15 is the deadline for spring and for, for master's. And for bachelor's is November 15. So keep these dates in mind. I know you don't have to memorize them now, but um, I'm going to share here right now. That is my email. And that is my, uh, my WhatsApp number. If it's a quick question, something very quick, I would like to answer it through WhatsApp. But if the question is complex, send me an email uh, and you're not alone in this process. This process takes time and this process uh, 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 needs as much advice as you can get. So uh, that's why we are here uh, 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 with uh, with uh, Murray State and with the team, uh, uh, Richard's team, and so that you guys can, uh, you know, ask questions, be informed.